Welcome to my lecture online. Here we're starting a new series on gravity. We're trying to find ways in calculating the force of gravity on an object due to the presence of other masses. We'll start with some simple examples where we have point masses and then we graduate to more complex examples where we have mass distributions such as shells and spheres. Now notice here that we have three masses, m1, m2, and m3, and we're trying to find the force of gravity on m3 due to the presence of the other two masses, m1 and m2. Now, gravity, or the force of gravity, is indeed a vector quantity, so to find the total force on m3, we have to add the two vector quantities, the force between m1 and m3, and the force between m2 and m3. So let's graph those vectors and see what they look like. So here we can graph the force between m1 and m3, And here we can grab the force between M2 and M3. And I'm predicting that that force will probably be a little bit larger. Notice those are vectors. And when we add them together, we have to take into account the direction. Now in this case, that's easy because they're both, both pointing in the same direction. So let's now calculate the magnitude of each of those two forces first. So first we start with the force between 1 and 3. And we just want the magnitude of that, so this is equal to g m1 m3 divided by the distance between them squared, that would be the sum of these two, it would be r1 plus r2 quantity squared. When we plug in the numbers, we get 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, and I'll leave out the unit so that's a little bit cleaner to work with. We have mass 1, that would be 2 times 10 to the 20th, and mass 3 is 1 times 10 to the 19th, and we divide that by the sum of those two distances, that would be 2.5 times 10 to the 10th, and we have to square that. So that gives us the magnitude of that force. Of course, we're going to need a calculator. And as far as the significant figures, notice that I try to keep things simple, so we're going to keep a few extra decimal places. Don't be alarmed, because this is just an example, and we just want to keep numbers simple. So 6.67 e to the 11 minus times 2 e 20 times 1 e 19 divided by 2.5 e to the 10 squared equals, and we get 2.134. So it'll be 2.134 times 10 to the 8 newtons. So that would be the force between mass 1 and mass 3. Now we do the same between mass 2 and mass 3. So we have force, uh, not 1 in this case, but it'll be 2 and 3. That's equal to g m2 m3 divided by just r2 squared. And that gives us... 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. Again, we keep just the numbers. We, uh, we have 1 times 10 to the 20th, and 1 times 10 to the 19th, and the whole thing divided by 1.5 times 10 to the 10th, and we have to square that. So let's see what that's equal to. And that becomes 2.964, 2.964 times 10 to the 8 newtons, and that should be an 8. There we go. And as we predicted, just a little bit bigger than the force between 1 and 3, because it's that much closer, and notice that the force of gravity depends upon 1 over the distance squared, so that has a bigger impact. So now we need to find the total force, and notice that since they're both pointing in the same direction, we can simply add the magnitudes. So that means that F total is simply equal, the magnitude of that is simply equal to F13 plus F23. Notice that the magnitudes of vectors cannot be negative, we're just finding the magnitude. So here we have 2.134 times 10 to the 8 meters plus 
2.964 times 10 to the 8, and that should not be meters, but newtons, of course, because that's a force. All right, so what that's equal to, so 2.964 plus 2.134, and I'm rounding it off, let's just write as 5.1, 5.1 times 10 to the 8 newtons. So that's the magnitude of the force. Now, if we want to write that as a vector quantity and realizing that it's pointing to the left, we can then say that F total as a vector is going to be equal to a minus 5.1 times 10 to the 8 newtons in the x direction. So this is how we would write it as a vector quantity, and that's how we would write it simply as the magnitude of the solution. And that's how it's done.